and welcome to today's episode of um, The World of 1984. A little um, bit of background about uh, the inspiration and context of uh, George Orwell's novel. Um, so just a reminder that you should be uh, taking down as many notes as you possibly can, but more importantly, trying to find some links of either similarity or difference between uh, the context of uh, 1984 and George Orwell compared with uh, Lang's uh, Metropolis. Uh, the other thing you need to be thinking about is possibly some uh, common themes or um, differences in ideas as represented by the two authors or the two composers rather. So let's get started. So as we know, 1984 is a dystopian novel uh, that's been written by the English writer George Orwell and it was published in 1949. Now this novel tells uh, the story of Winston Smith, who is the protagonist, and his attempt to rebel against the totalitarian state in which he lives. And this makes um, for what we know as a dystopian novel which deals with themes of oppression of the individual, totalitarian uh, control, censorship and propaganda, and of course the possibility of revolution and the challenges associated uh, with rebelling. Uh, now immediately you might be able to make some quick connections between the novel and Metropolis as we have been discussing in class already. Now. 1984, along with novels such as uh, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, um, is one of the most famous and most cited uh, works of dystopian fiction in literature. Um, it's been so um, significant uh, that it has actually been translated into 15 different languages and the novel itself has left a profound impression um, upon the English language and the way that we think and um, of course the way that we speak um, and see uh, the media today. Um, 1984 um, has terminology which um, certainly has connotations and has been associated with um, discussion in discussions concerning privacy or state security issues and you may have heard the term Orwellian um, as um, a way to describe actions or organizations that are reminiscent of the totalitarian society that's depicted throughout the novel. Now originally uh, the text or the title of the novel was called uh, or was the last man in Europe and this is an interesting choice of title um, because immediately we uh, get a sense of the isolation, the despair, the sense of false hope um, that it does exist in the novel and that all well develops throughout uh, the events. Certainly it offers us a, a paradoxical notion of what it means to be the last man, uh, the idea of wanting to escape but also being imprisoned um, by the system. So it's really interesting that the publisher actually suggested for marketing reasons that this title be changed. And no one really knows why uh, Orwell settled on the title 1984. But certainly there's been some speculation about um, it being an allusion um, to the centenary of the Fabian Society, which was a socialist organisation founded in 1884. So what were some of Orwell's inspirations? Well, for this clip, we're just going to look broadly at um, some of his earlier um, inspiration. Um, in terms of the world that he was immediately associated with. Now in his essay, Why I Write, Orwell clearly explains that all of his serious work um, since the Spanish Civil War in 1936 uh, was written, quote, directly and indirectly against totalitarianism. 
um, and for democratic socialism. So when we look at 1984, we can certainly look at it as a cautionary tale against totalitarianism and in particular the betrayal of a revolution by those that claim to defend or to support it. Um, however, as many reviewers and critics have stated, um, it should not be read as an attack on socialism as a whole, uh, but rather on totalitarianism and, the, and potential uh, totalitarianism. Now, Orwell had already set forth his distrust of totalitarianism and the betrayal of revolutions um, in earlier works, and in particular, we see this in Homage to Catalonia, as well as one of his uh, more famous um, novels, uh, Animal Farm, which was an allegorical tale uh, that reflected on the dynamics of the uh, Russian Revolution. Um, certainly, 1984 celebrates um, the idea of having individual freedom in the present and the potential of losing that um, in the future, which is something that he explores quite deeply in his novel, uh, which is, of course, that loss of individual freedom. We notice that in his um, text, uh, in his novel, that he reflects a lot on the world that um, he was interested in and um, many aspects of uh, the society in which 1984 is set is actually reflective of the Stalin era Soviet Union. For example, um, The Two Minutes Hate uh, was based on Stalinism's habitual demonization of its enemies um, and its rivals. And of course, the uh, description of Big Brother himself bears a strange um, and, and quite physical resemblance to Stalin, as you see there on your right. Uh, the party's proclaimed uh, great enemy, Emmanuel Goldstein, um, certainly resembles Leon uh, Trotsky, um, and I guess in part mostly because they're both Jewish, but they also share other characteristics um, which you can explore through uh, the novel. Now, there were other um, direct influences for the way that uh, Orwell wrote, and his biographer, Michael Sheldon, recognised um, his childhood as being one of the biggest influences um, for his writing. Um, one of the reasons for this is certainly um, that he draws on a lot of the imagery that came from where he lived uh, in Henley, and we see this in the Golden Country on the outskirts of the city, which Julia and uh, Winston escape to on their secret rendezvous meetings. Um, he was also bullied, or rather Orwell was also bullied um, as a child, and we see a lot of um, the resentment towards uh, tormentors and authority figures come through in the text, uh, 1984. He also um, worked in the Indian Burma police and um, his experiences with censorship in the BBC when he worked um, for the BBC uh, were also models of authoritarian power that he was speaking out against, in particular um, with respect to censorship and um, controls over what can and can't be um, made uh, public through the media. He also had specific literary influences and um, we notice that uh, as mentioned earlier, one of those influences was um, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, uh, which is set in the future and certainly looks at what the world could look like um, given the uh, current climate of change in science and um, biology as well as um, other things. Uh, one of the other uh, notable um, texts that was interesting to uh, Orwell was A Modern Utopia and Orwell personally um, t 
told a reporter that at some point he might write a book just like um, a modern utopia. And it's been said that 1984 is his personal answer to um, H.G. Wells' um, novel. Um, his work overseas um, it, for the BBC um, uh, meant that he spent quite some time under the control of the Ministry of Information and this meant that um, it he drew on these things um, to describe the architectural landscape in the novel 1984. For example, um, the Ministry of Information building, um, the Senate House, as you see there, um, certainly um, reflects many of his descriptions for the Ministry of Truth's architectural um, uh, makeup. Um, and if you're thinking about links to Metropolis, we can see some very interesting um, similarities between the representations of um, the two dystopian settings, um, as you can see there on the bottom right. So for now, um, this is just a quick overview of some of his immediate um, uh, insp inspirations or sources of inspiration. Um, in the next clip, we're going to look more specifically at um, how he was inspired um, to respond to social and political life of the world in which he lived. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to um, either do some research or, of course, um, bring them up in class for discussion. 